Today we're creating this digital clock using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. This clock is displaying the real time 1410. We see that is represented here as 2.10 p.m. And this time is updating every single second in our code. This is an excellent beginner project as we will be learning the date object in JavaScript, which is an inbuilt object which we can use to get the current time. This project is also an excellent opportunity to learn to update HTML elements based based on a changing variable within our JavaScript code. Together with a clean design and a nice gradient background, this is the best digital clock tutorial you will find on YouTube. Let's get started. I have created an index.html file. And in here, we are gonna write exclamation mark. That is gonna give us a boilerplate HTML template. We're gonna change the title to digital clock. I'm gonna save that. And then we are going to open this with live server. If you do not have live server, you can install it here by just searching live server. And it's the one by Ritwick Day. And you just install it there. Live server is going to allow you to run your code, your index file here as a live website. And when you see I save, it updates the website. So if I were to change this title, digital clock to and then it updates that live. Then we can create our two other files we're going to need. One is styles.css and the other one is a script.js file. We can leave these two empty for now, but we can close our explorer so we have more space to see our code. Let's link to our CSS file here, style and we just add an S here, styles like that. And also our script file here, we want to give it a source. And that source is going to be script.js. And we also want to be using the defer attribute to run the script after we have run the whole HTML. Inside our body, we want to create a div. And we want to give that div a class, which we're going to use to target in our style sheet later. And we're going to give that class a clock name. Then we're going to create span elements to hold all of our actual numbers for the clock. So the first span is going to have an ID of hours. And by default, let's just put that to zero, zero so that we can style that properly and to see what we're doing. Then we're gonna have another span here and that's gonna just hold the colon like so, which is gonna be the separating thing between the hours, the minutes and the seconds. Then we can copy this down, shift alt down. We just change the hours to minutes. Keep that at zero as well. And let's copy down that one more time two seconds. And then we can actually remove this last, this third colon. We are gonna create a new ID here instead. And we are gonna call it AM PM, like so. If we are to inspect here, we can see in our body, our clock, and it has all of our elements that we just created. Perfect. We are finished with our HTML, then we can open our styles.css. Let's just test it here by using the body, giving it a background color of red, saving. Okay, it's connected and it works. Then we can remove that. We are gonna change the background color to background and we are going to give it a linear gradient and it's going to go from left to right and it is going to be the color of hashtag 0091EA which is a blue and it's going to transition to hashtag 673AB7 which is a purple which gives us our gradient. If you want to word wrap your code, you can go here to the view, go under word wrap and hit that. And that's gonna give you all your code uh, wrapped depending on how big your screen size is.
Let's also go to Google Fonts, fonts.google.com. We're gonna search for Poppins. We are gonna click Poppins. We are gonna go down and we are gonna select uh, medium 500. I've already selected like so. And we are gonna go to the import. We are gonna copy paste everything between the style tags. We're gonna copy them like so. And we are gonna paste them at the top of our style sheet. Then we're gonna copy this CSS rule here. And we're gonna give that to the body. So we can close Google Fonts. Let's see that it updates here. Save and it has updated successfully. Let's change the color to white. Let's display it using Flexbox. Let's justify the content to the center, which is gonna make it horizontally centered. We also want to do that vertically by aligning items to the center. We're gonna also give it a height, which we need to be 100% of the view height. And then we're gonna remove the margin, the zero to remove this scroll bar here. Then we're gonna target the actual clock, which is the one div that holds all the numbers. And we are gonna give it a font size of four rem, one rem is 16 pixels. Then we're gonna give it a slight text shadow to make it a bit more modern. 0 0.25 rem, 0 0.25 rem, these are the directions of the shadow. 0 0.6 rem, and then it's gonna be RGBA 255, 255, 255 and then 0 0.1 for the opacity, which gives a little white background as we can see. And then we are gonna display this using flex as well. And then we are gonna give it a gap of 1.5 rem to get a bit of space between the numbers, like so. And we are gonna text align the numbers to the center. And then lastly, we are gonna target the seconds. And then we are gonna say that the minimum width of the seconds, which is this one, is going to be 5.5 rem. We are adding this minimum width on the seconds counter because when the numbers are changing every second, it's actually gonna reduce and expand the width of the seconds div here, or the span element, which would also reduce and increase the overall size and width of the clock. And that would make the clock kind of jump around a bit on the page when the seconds are ticking. So by giving it a minimum width, which is larger than the normal width, it's gonna stay constant when the second counter is uh, iterating. That is all for our CSS. Let's jump over to our script. We are going to create a new function here to uh, actually run our clock. And we're going to say update this clock. Actually update time. And then inside of this function we are going to call the... Uh, we're going to use the date object. We're going to create a constant called now. Uh, and then we are gonna say now is equal to new date. And this is how you use the date. So it's an inbuilt object and you call it by using the new keyword and then date and then these parentheses. Now let's just console log now and call this function update time so that we can see what this now looks like, like so. And we see now the only thing this function does is it creates a now constant. We call the date uh, function in built object, and then we console log whatever that is. And now if I update or refresh the page, you can see that the counter 
you can see that the seconds here are ticking because we are actually updating the time. It is creating a snapshot of whatever the date or the current time is at the time when we run the function. So essentially our whole clock will just need to update this um, inbuilt date object. Now the rest of the function is about picking out whatever we need from this date. We basically don't need the actual day and the month. We just need the hours, minutes, and seconds. Let's close the console. We can also remove the console log. We are gonna define a variable called hours. We are gonna say now dot get hours, which is another inbuilt function. And that is gonna pick out the hours from the date object. The same thing we are gonna do with minutes. We're gonna say get minutes. And then we are gonna do the same with seconds. Now get seconds. Then we are gonna convert these hours into 12 hour periods. So we can only go up to 12 and one is AM and the other one is PM. We're gonna do that by saying hours equals hours modulus 12. And what modulus does is that it divides anything, in this case it's hours, uh, by whatever number you give it. So here it's gonna take hours, it's gonna see how many times within hours we can divide 12. So if hours is equal to 12, and we take the modulus of that, modulus of 12, what's gonna be left over is gonna be zero. But if hours was, for example, 13, and we do modulus 12 on it, what's gonna be left is one, uh, et cetera, et cetera. If we do 14, what is gonna be left when you, divide, when you take 14 and see how many times 12 fits into it, two is gonna be left. So this way, when ours is anything above 12, for example, 15, like it is now, then three is gonna be what's left over. And three, we could say it is instead of 15, because then we just put PM behind it. This is how we turn 24 hour format into 12 hour format. Then we are gonna take the hours and we are gonna turn the zeros into 12s because we don't wanna be counting from zero. We wanna be counting from either 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. like we do in a digital clock. So if hours equals hours, then we want to just say that it's hours. If it doesn't, we wanna say that it's equal to 12. So what we're checking for here is essentially if hours is zero or not. And if it is zero, we wanna make it 12 instead. How do we do that? Well, if hours is not falsy, it's gonna return hours. If it is falsy, aka zero, it's gonna return 12. So whenever hours is zero, this equals to zero, we're gonna say instead, make it 12. Whenever hours is not zero, just make it whatever hours is, like for example, nine. Now we are gonna make sure that whatever number we have, it's gonna have a double digit formatting or a zero in front of it, worst case. So if hours equals hours less than 10, then we are gonna uh, give it a zero in front and we're gonna add hours. And if it's not less than 10, we're just gonna give it hours because then it's gonna take two spots. Then for minutes, we are gonna do the same. We are just gonna copy paste down this and we are gonna say minutes and minutes and minutes, like so. And the same thing for seconds. If you want to change multiple instances of a word in one go, hit Shift D and then you can target them all and write seconds. 
Let's save that. Now we want to actually update the HTML and put in our values. So we are going to target the DOM element by writing document get element by ID. We are going to target the hours ID and we are going to run text content and we're going to set that to be our hours um, variable like so and we see it's 15 or 3 p.m. Let's do the same for our minutes. And we're gonna set that to minutes. And let's do the same for seconds and seconds. And save that. Turn on word wrap. And we see now when I am updating the code our time is also updating. The second timer is not ticking here because we are only running this function once and that is when we load the page. So in order to change that, in order to update it every single second, we need to create another uh, function here. And that is gonna be a set interval function where we are gonna call the update time every single second or a thousand milliseconds. Like so, now it is initializing here and being updated here. The last thing we need to add now is the am or pm word. So we are gonna create a new variable, call it am pm. It is going to be equals to hours and bigger, let's see, bigger, or equals 12. You can use the ternary operator again. If it is bigger than 12 or equal, then what is the time? Well, it is PM. Otherwise, we want to say that it is AM. Like so. Then we are also going to create a DOM element here. Get get element by ID. We want to target the AM PM HTML. And we also want to set its text content equals to AM PM variable. There we go for 16 PM. If you would like to see more cool tutorials like this, you can check out my channel and I highly recommend this next video right here to watch next. See you in the next one.